I love hosting New Year's Eve. Sorry. That said, it can get a little chaotic. Thankfully, I made sure the party was stocked with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. Drizzly lets you compare prices on a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits, then get them delivered right to your door. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. In early 2020, the world shut down. Stores, restaurants, schools, and whole communities shut their doors in an effort to protect human life. As the world quickly changed, one man went on Facebook to get a degree in Internet Epidemiology. Brian, along with his lab assistant, Hotley, are curing coronavirus by commenting on fake news and reposting recipes of secret virus cures from a friend of a friend who works high up in government. Join Brian and Hoadley as they discuss the world and life during this forced interruption. Learning, laughing, and loving in this real-life commercial break. On this episode of The Commercial Break... I can't, I can't delete it because I'm like, remember this, the hope? Do you remember yeah. when we had some <laughs> hope? Yes, like, 2020. Happy New Year, Burn 20s. It's, it's going to be great. It's, it's the best the year, year ever. Everything comes to fruition. It's the best year. My yeah. wildest dreams are all coming true. I don't want to. The show was so big and such a success that I know I'm going to have success on the other end of this. I'm catapulting. I'm catapulting. Yeah. I'm going to ride this wave right into huge success. What he (laughs) rode this wave into was an Uber driver. That's what the guy does now is he's an Uber fucking driver. I didn't want to hurt the grass. I was like, it wasn't about hurting the grass. It's that I knew that the grass had to be broken in order to regrow. The next episode of The Commercial Break starts now. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha-cha! I'm going to be doing an uh, announcement. I'm going to be doing my show, our show, from my Commercial Break podcast official mask. If you can see that out in YouTube land. You see that? Do you like that? I love it. I love it how it's stitched on there. Absolutely yeah, love it. It looks good. It's super quality. I know. I actually had someone ask me, what is that? But I work wow. with them, so I told them that it was that I didn't know that I got it for free somewhere <laughs> from my own podcast. <laughs> they were uh, some I don't know. <laughs> what does it say? I'm not even really sure. I picked it up, you know, at one of those free mask places, <laughs> and he was like, "Wow, they give away masks like that for free? Oh yeah, the free mask place. Where's that? Uh gas station, I think. I think they're giving these <laughs> they're, they're giving these away. I, I'm sorry, I've been lying to you. I, I picked it up off the ground <laughs> at the gas station. That's what I did. Gas. So there's my... That's super sanitary. Oh, man, I'm telling you what. I'd like a fucking... (laughs) I was already a little bit of a germaphobe before this all started. Now I'm like full-blown in panic mode. And I know that I'm sending my son straight down the same path that I'm I'm going down (laughs) of neuroticism and insanity because, you know, now he gets a little bit of mud on his hands and he's like, da-da, da-da, da-da. And he like shows it to me and I'm like, oh. And then I freak out. I'm like, oh, it's coronavirus. Ah! Oh, we got to wash our hands. Wash hands, wash hands. And I, I know I'm passing my neuroticism onto my child, but I guess there's really no way to avoid it, huh? We all do it. No, I, mean, I was actually thinking that at the beginning of the pandemic, you know, wow, this could really be pushing people who have a serious, who who are diagnosed, let's say, with germophobia or whatever. Oh, yeah. Called. <laughs> you know, this could really push people to the edge. Listen, if my Facebook is any indication <laughs> of what's going on in the mental health of the United States right now, it is a straight fucking fuck factory because people are losing their potatoes i know over everything hanging on by a thread uh i don't even i don't think there's any thread to be hung on to anymore (laughs) i was just talking to a friend and i hadn't talked to her in probably five years so i said oh my god it must have been five years since we spoke and she goes no i think it was just last year and i was like man it's it's 2020 feels like five years because I just, <laughs> I, know. I honestly am losing track of time and space. And yeah. it's so fucking weird. This feels like the longest year that I've, that I've ever had. And we're only about, oh, well, I guess we're not only about, we're more than two thirds of the way through it. Yeah. It's fucked up, Hoadley. 
Yeah, it's Fucked crazy. Up. I can't even believe this year turned out like this. Like I remember ringing in the new year, and in fact, here's a funny, <laughs> here's a funny tidbit. I recorded. Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper's New Year's okay. thing yeah. just because Jeff and I were kind of watching it and kind of doing other stuff and whatever. And I wanted to watch it later and it's really funny. And so now I see it periodically when I'm looking at my recorded show. Oh, really? And I'm like, I can't, I can't delete it because I'm like, remember uh, this, the hope? Do you remember when we had <laughs> some hope? Yeah. Like, 2020. Happy New Year, Roaring Twenties. It's, it's gonna be great. It's, it's the best the year, year ever. Everything comes to fruition. It's the best year. My wildest dreams are all coming true. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it just turned out that Nostradamus was 20 years off when he said 2000 was the year it all ends. So, I mean, wow, wow, yeah. Uh, but you know, enough of that because you know, enough of that because we hear about it all the time. And this is the the point of the commercial break is to take a break from what's going on in the drama. And how do we get past this? We get past this by wearing our fucking masks. I don't That's even understand. One. That's step one. I'm That's still watching one. these videos of these fucking morons that are just out there. I mean, listen, I understand you, you don't want your freedoms trampled on, but you wear a fucking seatbelt, you can wear a fucking mask. I've said it before yeah. on the show. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. Don't make no. it a big deal. Just don't make it a big deal. Wear yeah. a mask. Maybe Just we're wrong. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're right. But if a little piece of cloth between you and I, <laughs> and just think about it this way, you know, most of these people who are not wearing masks, you know, have some kind of ideological, you know, yeah. I don't know. They have an ideological dent in their brain, and so they they think the government's you know the, the, the deep state and you know the deep state eliminator three thousand and George Bush. And blah, blah. Listen, right? If that's true, the mask is covering you up from your facial recognition software that's clearly following you around everywhere. So there you go. Let your paranoia be calmed by the mask. Just wear. That it. is a good point. That's a great point. And if you want a TCB mask. This is what you got to do. You have to go to at the commercial break. That is our Instagram page. That's our Insta. Insta. And we also have a Facebook page, but probably the Insta more so than the Facebook page. But uh, our great marketing team here at the our great marketing team. <laughs> our great we marketing. Have a great marketing. We team. do. Our great marketing team here at the commercial break uh, is going to be giving away masks with our logo on it. We have ones for men. We have ones for women. We have big. We have small. We have short. We have tall. Uh, now that I sound like a Dr. Seuss book, go to at the commercial break <laughs> on Insta and become a follower of us, of ours. I guess that's how that works. You follow us and then we, we have lots of great content on there. We'll be giving away uh, some masks and some cups and some other stuff, some other swag because we got it and we want to give it to our faithful listeners out there. All... That is so cool. Thank you, marketing team. You're welcome. That marketing team really gets, really gets at it. Gust- <laughs> Gustavo, who's one, of, who's one of the marketing on the marketing team, who really, in all truth, is my brother-in-law. He gets so excited when I say his name on air. So I'm just like, Gustavo, one, Gustavo, uh, Gustavo. one day, keep on going, Gustavo, and I'm going to name an episode after you. Yes. The episode Gustavo, episode number 312. <laughs> Gustavo. Yes. I love that name too, Gustavo. It's a great name. Yeah, it sounds like a name. Spanish sex machine, doesn't he? <laughs> Gustavo. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Who's that boy in the underwear? <laughs> Gustavo. Gustavo. Who's that boy who you do care? Gustavo. Feels like a spy, international man of mystery. So yes. uh, go to at the commercial break on Insta and join. And then you go to tcbpodcast.com, which is where you can become a member of the break room. Let me explain a little change. Change up in the seventh inning, if you don't mind, Chrissy. Here's what's okay. going to happen. I've decided it's entirely too much responsibility for on my shoulders for me to actually put out a newsletter every month. And given a, given the response of the newsletter, uh, you know, we only have three people at the commercial break. Two of them did not open the newsletter. <laughs> I've decided that no one gives a shit about a newsletter. What I decided yeah. is, or what we've decided is, what we've collectively decided is that it's probably better if we just give like extra content away every week instead of every month. Because let's just be honest about it. A month goes by, you fucking forget about it. So what we're going to do is Christy and I are going to do an after show uh, every single episode. We're going to do an after show. You can get that after show by going to tcbpodcast.com, join the break room, and then you get a link to that after show uh, every week, as well as the link to the YouTube video and after show if you're a member of the break room. And big announcement, <laughs> next week, episode 20, 26, because I think we're on 25 now. I can't, I can't even remember. On, on episode next week, <laughs> episode number next week, we yes. are going to be rolling out YouTube uh, for everybody. So there you go. So if you want Sweet. extra content, if you feel like you just want to be a part of a club that's elusive and exclusive, <laughs> join us 
at the break room, www.tcbpodcast.com. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Gustavo Oh Gustavo, I love you so much <laughs> Hi Gustavo, it's me Henry, Henry from Podcast Universe Henry I just like saying your name Hello. Gustavo <laughs> Gustavo Hi Holly, how are you? I'm doing well I Henry. know you are I've been checking <laughs> things out around the house Just to make sure everything's okay I want to make sure our banner ad is progressing nicely I want to make sure that uh, I want to make sure that uh, well, let me put it this way. I want to make sure that uh, that everyone is safe and sound at your home. So I've installed a few electronic devices just to make sure everything's okay. How can the banner ad work if you're not even alive? That's basically my point. And so if you see a few beeping things, like maybe a red spot, you know, a blinking light or something like that, don't worry. <laughs> this is simply a device to make sure you're okay. I call it the. Uh, uh, Podcast Tracker Universe. <laughs> Don't be alarmed. It's just me, your friendly pod, your friendly podcast helper, Henry Fonda. That's good to know, Henry. I like your. I like the sound of your voice sometimes. Ah. <laughs> you say my name one more time. Henry. Gustavo. <laughs> Gustavo. <laughs> Gustavo. <laughs> I'm going to make up a song for Gustavo. So uh, what is there to say? I, I, I want to get to something right away, right off the bat before I forget about it. My brother, okay. Danny, uh, he may, he's like a, he himself is, I think, becoming kind of a super fan of the show because he's always emailing me and telling me, texting me and telling me about the things I got right or wrong or what he liked or what he didn't like about the I show. Like and last it. week, he got to me immediately to explain to me that the guy's name was Brian Dunkelman, was the set, the second host of American Idol in season number oh, one. Oh, right. We were talking about that. We, yes. and, I, and I thought his name was Ryan also, but it turns out it was Brian Dunkelman <laughs> was the guy's name. Dunkelman. Brian Dunkelman. Brian Dunkelman was, okay, so for those of you that don't know and everybody knows, so I'm just re- rehashing the story for the one person that may not have ever seen American Idol. On season number one of American Idol, there were two hosts, Ryan Seacrest and Brian Dunkelman, and they worked as a pair, and one was like the straight man. That would have been Ryan well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, he's not necessarily a straight man, but he was he was kind of the dry guy. And then there was the comedian yeah. type, and that was Brian Dunkelman. Mm-hmm. And Brian Dunkelman, uh, despite what some people might think, Brian Dunkelman was not fired from American Idol. He was actually asked to come back, and he mm-hmm. said, no, he did. I don't yeah. want to. I, the show was so big and such a success that I know I'm going to have success on the other end of this. I'm catapulting. I'm catapulting. Yeah, I'm going to ride this wave right into career. huge success. What he rode this wave into was an Uber driver. That's what the guy does now. Yeah. Is he's an Uber fucking driver. Brian Dunkelman is. And he, you know, and people occasionally get in touch with him and he readily admits it was, he's, this is his joke that he tells, he's also a stand up comic. And I guess a couple of, I watched Thank a, God. We maybe we'll have, sense of humor maybe we'll ask him if he wants to come thing. on. Should That's we ask idea. him if he wants to come on? That's a good We idea. should. I bet he's got a mm-hmm. great story. So Dunkelman's, one of Dunkelman's jokes is, some people say I made the biggest mistake in television history by not signing on to American Idol uh, season two. I say, no, you're incorrect. I made the biggest mistake in history 
<laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's a good one. You know, that's a good one. Hey, you got to have a sense of humor about he's, it. He, I watched one of his sets and he's got another joke I thought was also pretty funny. He's like, hey, my wife just had another kid. You know, my wife just had a, new, a brand new baby. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. Settle, settle down. Settle down. It wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> so you know hey listen the guy's uh the guy's he knows how to poke fun at himself and that's it so danny my brother thank you for that yeah. information brian dunkelman thank now you, an danny. uber driver that's the update on brian dunkelman ryan seacrest meanwhile owns half of you know the world the liberal uh, <laughs> yeah the, 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 the media, media world yeah. <laughs> we've had quite He's at least making a ton of money let's just say that he that guy is making a shit ton of money i mean i can't yeah when you're the executive producer of just one show, like the, the Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Yeah, that's enough to yeah. just. When he brought that to E! Television, which E! Television has never been some powerhouse network. You know, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's not I don't watch. I say I'm not. I used to watch it all the time. What'd you watch? Like, what were you watching? There was like, well, I mean, they've always had the award show stuff, you know, like the, oh, red, yeah, the carpet red carpet stuff. stuff. And then they've had, you know, they had like Talk Soup. Talk um, Soup was good. That was good. Talk Soup was good. I'll give yes. you that. Yeah. With uh, yes. Joel McHale. Joel, yeah. yeah. Joel McHale. And then the Kardashians, obviously. And, you know, they were they were big in my life for a little while. I like always it was a go to network I could change it to. But then after a while, I, I definitely got away from it so <laughs> i've been back really I, the only thing that i ever really watched the network for i watched talk soup i like that i thought that was good mm -hmm. and then i watched the stern show when they had the stern oh, right. show which yes. i think really kind of propped them up there for a while i think that that yeah. was basic i mean that show was running like if it was after nine o'clock at night on e you were it was likely stern was on reruns or something so right. that's since we didn't get stern down here in atlanta that's how you know we got to watch uh howard stern if if you were a fan at the time and i i mm -hmm. i was so, um, but the E network, but it's never been a like a huge powerhouse network, right? It's right. just kind of like a dinky little, you know, network. When Ryan Seacrest, no matter who was in the executive office at the time, when Ryan Seacrest, the host from American Fucking Idol, walks in the door and he's like, "I got a great idea. I'm gonna sell you on. You know that girl, the girl who was in the sex tape with Ray J." <laughs> People are like, who the fuck is Ray J? <laughs> no, I don't remember. He is the. She's the daughter. Of the guy who uh, advised O.J. Simpson in the in the, in his trial, yeah. you remember that guy? And they're like, "Who the fuck are you talking about? The Kardashians? What is this?" When he walks in the door and says, "We're going to put the Kardashians on TV, and it's going to be you know, everyone's going to love it." These executives must have been like, "The fuck are you talking about, man? Why why would we put some nobody, nothing, does nothing, has nothing person on TV and try and make it interesting?" And what a like. What the fuck? It just took the world by storm then. Mm -hmm. And it's such a shit idea. I mean, when you think about it, we're just going to follow the Kardashians around? Who fucking cares? But I guess a lot of people a lot fucking of people, care. A lot of people did. Uh huh. Not me. I'm not one. I just want to raise my hand and say that. I do not watch those kind of television shows. I do not turn on. <laughs> You're I do not turn lifetime. on. <laughs> You're a lifetime. Lifetime man. is a network for educate for educated men <laughs> and women in yes. the in the in the 21st century, Chrissy. <laughs> I just want you to know that they've got lots of great, you know, solid family programming that that I like around the house. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Okay. okay, I'm embarrassed. I'm a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> we had a very exciting week here at the Green household. Ooh, do my in laws. Came in town. Uh, my in-laws live in Spain. Let's let's put it that way. And you can't you can't go from Spain to America or from America to Spain right now because of the borders are closed because you know because of coronavirus. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> like anybody <laughs> needs reminding because of coronavirus. So the only way that you can get from Spain to the United States is by quarantining somewhere else in a country that does not have those kind of restrictions. So my in-laws decided that they were going to go to San Jose, um, Costa Rica to quarantine because it's one of the places that they can get in and out of, you know, freely. And then they right. can go quarantine and then they're allowed to come here to the States. There, this there's is a, a whole process. It's a whole fucking process. Yeah. And there's, and there's a long story behind this. See, Costa Rica only just recently opened up their borders for travel to and from the United States because they really were on lockdown too, big time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we couldn't get the travel tickets from Costa Rica to here, uh, where we live. We couldn't get those tickets till very last minute. Let's just put it that way. So we get these tickets very last minute. We get online, we get the tickets, 
We send them over. Everyone's excited. Uh, they're going to come from Co- San Jose, Costa Rica. So this is Friday, uh, a couple days ago. So Friday comes, 9 o'clock in the morning, phones start ringing and beeping. Ding, 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 ring, 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 bing, bing, bing. And I'm like, geez, what's going on? And finally, Astrid answers the phone. And I just watch her face, like, like just oh. drop. Like, her eyes got wide. And she was like, oh, no. Oh, shit. And I'm like, what's going on? She's talking in Spanish. You know, something about this, something about travel, something about the plane, whatever. And I'm like, oh, no. This is the second flight. Uh, this is their third flight because the first two were canceled by Delta. Because Delta, oh. I, for whatever reason, I guess Delta decided they didn't have enough passengers. They didn't want to fly to and from. But they took our money. And then they canceled the flight, right? Oh, no. And this was from Costa Rica. San Jose, to, Costa Rica to Atlanta, to, to Georgia. The, to the, okay. Yep. To the United States, right? But to the United States. But bouncing yeah. around, but to the United States. Yeah. So she gets off the phone and she's like, uh, we got a big fucking problem. And I'm like, what? what's going on? Another flight canceled? And she's like, no. You see, her parents showed up at the airport in San Jose with tickets from San Jose to Atlanta, Georgia. The unfortunate part was in in order to catch that plane from San Jose to Atlanta, Georgia, they needed to be in San Jose, California, not oh. San Jose, Costa Rica. Oh. Not only did they not have tickets for this particular flight, they didn't even have tickets in the same fucking country. Right. I, I mean, listen, I've made a few travel boo-boos in my time, but this is a big travel boo-boo. When you show up at the airport and you got tickets for a different country altogether, yeah. it's like, oh shit, what do you do? Chrissy, I swear I have never spent so much time on the phone with so many illogical human beings as I did when I got on the phone with the airline. And I won't really? say the airline's name. Oh my God, Chrissy. Oh my God. Oh. Joe's airline, how can I help you? Oh, uh, yeah, dude. I got a problem. I'm really hoping you can help me out. Mm, okay. What's your problem? Yeah, listen. Uh, my uh, in-laws, they just showed up in San Jose, Costa Rica airport to fly to Atlanta, Georgia, but they have tickets for San Jose, California. Oh, uh, I don't think they're going to be able to get on the flight. What did you say? Yeah, I don't think they're going to be able to get on the flight with those tickets. Well, no fucking shit. They're yeah. in San Jose, Costa Rica. They need to be in San Jose, California. Uh I see your problem. Uh, Well, how can I help you? I need help getting them from San Jose, Costa Rica to Atlanta, Georgia. Well, they're certainly not going to be able to do that with tickets to San Jose, California. Oh, my fucking Christ, guy. I I just explained that to you. Are there any flights from uh, San Jose, Costa Rica to to Atlanta, Georgia? Are they in San Jose, California? Are they in San Jose, Costa Rica? (laughs) (laughs) So then he's like, so Jeez. this is the, but, 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 Hukodi, let me explain. Not only did it take me 15 minutes to explain the situation to any rational human being, but at the same time, when you call the airline, no one is available. So they tell you they're going to, they're like, you know, please leave your name here and we'll call you back. You won't lose your, your line in the queue, your place in the yeah. queue. We'll call you back in, you know, 30 to six hours later, right? So this is like an hour later. Now, mind you, flight leaving 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. This is the first guy I get on the phone. I've already waited 35 minutes to have him call me back. Now he's explaining to me that they can't get on the flight because they have tickets to San Jose from San Jose, California. As if I did not understand the fucking problem in the first place. Right. That's why you're calling. (laughs) That's why you're calling. Well, listen, uh, this is not necessarily something I can help you with in this department. I'm going to transfer you to the other department. Okay, thanks. Thanks for calling Joe's Airline. Have a good day. I'll put you through right now. Ring, 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 ring. Thank you for calling Joe's Airline. Unfortunately, all of our representatives are busy right now. Please leave your name and we'll call you back in 35 to six hours later. So now I've been transferred to another person, uh, you know, someone more sophisticated than whoever answered the phone the first time. But they're going to call me back in 35 minutes to six hours later. Right. So now I I didn't get transferred right away to somebody. Oh, (laughs) Meanwhile, my, my poor in-laws are at the fucking airport yeah. and they're like, we only have two hours before we get on the, before the flight closes, right? And we've already wasted one hour just explaining to someone what's going on. So, right. Hi, uh, this is, this is Jenny from, uh, Cho's airline. Can I speak to Mr. Green? This is Mr. Green. I understand your parents are in, uh, your in-laws are in San Jose, California and they need to go to San Jose, say, uh, Costa Rica. Oh, Lord. No, Jenny, this is not at all the problem. The problem is they're in San Jose, Costa Rica, and they need to get to Atlanta fucking Georgia. Can you help with that? 
Oh, it says right here that they're... That I must have the wrong person because it says right here that they're, that they're going from San Jose, California to San Jose, Costa Rica. No, 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 Jenny. You got it all wrong. Let me explain to you quickly because time is running out here. Um, they're going. They're in San Jose, Costa Rica. They have tickets for San Jose, California. They want to get to Atlanta, Georgia. And I don't care if they fucking get to the United States, but can you please help me get that ticket moved out right now? Okay, so let me, let me see if I understand the situation correctly. They're in Atlanta, Georgia. And they were going to go to San Jose, California, but now they want to go to Costa Rica. <laughs> you must have been Holy. pulling your, you must have been pulling your hair out, and that's what happened to your hair. What are you trying to say about my hair? I was saying you pulled it all out. I... <laughs> all you people want is more, 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 more. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> this is how I was born. I was born this way. <laughs> Gaga told me, Gaga, <laughs> my son has now decided that he likes the movie Sing, which he calls Ish. Do you know the movie Sing with the character? With the, it's yes. A, it, oh okay. my gosh, yeah. Luca. Yeah, my, my nephew loved that one. Cute movie. Aww, but all, so cute. Yeah, now we've moved on from Tots to Sing, but he can't say Sing. So he says Ish, Ish. So he runs around. He's like Ish, Aww. Ish, Ish, Ish. And now he's he only wants to listen to the music. He doesn't want to watch the actual movie. I mean, sometimes he wants to watch the movie, but he wants to watch, he wants to listen to it on Spotify, right? So I give him yeah. the iPad and I it, I have a lock on it so he can just do the Spotify. And for a while there, he liked the song, the Gaga song, you know, whatever it is, you know. Man, you, we have a nasty romance. Whatever the fuck. Yes. But so at the beginning, they're like, la, la, ga, 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 oh, na, 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 na. And so my yeah. son is running around like, ga, 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 And I'm like, oh, you're so sweet. Cute. So Joe's airline. Okay, back to Joe's Takes, yeah, I just had, I had to calm myself down there for a second before I had an aneurysm. I don't know, we took it. Why did we just talk about Because I said this is, because you made a mention of my hair. This is like. Like, your hair is fantastic. Your hair has always been the same since I've known you now for 13 years. It's Shay. always been not there since I've met you. That's, that's, <laughs> I think it's crawl. I think it's. I think it's running away up no, towards the top of my head. No, not. you think it's been no, the same? It's the same. Yeah. it's been the exact same. Uh, and I love it. Thank you. And, and I love yours. You have such a big, beautiful thank mane you. of hair. I wish I, for just really? one day, could have something like that and just like go like this. But since my hair is just going to look like a, you know, a frizzy mop on top of my head, I've decided to just ignore it all. Together. I wish for one day I could shave my head. That would just be much easier. Tell you what, you shave your head, give me that mop of hair of yours. I'm going to throw it on my switch. head, and for a couple of months, we'll just, you know, we'll play podcast switchies. I love it. Yeah, I switcheroosies, love it. <laughs> no givesy backsies. <laughs> So Joe's air so Joe's airline it takes it takes four of the four it takes three three hours and fifty nine minutes of the four hours that we have in order to get them on this flight to get them on this flight. Like they had to call the control hub and the hub and really? I'm sure they were talking to the CEO at one point. I'm not even sure what was going on. All this to just get my in-laws switched on a flight, you know, from the wrong fucking country, I understand. But right. so uh Okay, so then now there's a situation where there's a credit, like there's a credit in the mix, right? So there's a credit and how we apply that credit and where we're going to use that credit and all this other stuff. And she says, listen, finally, there's a supervisor on the phone that has like a lick of common sense, right? And she Mm -hmm. says, listen, if I try and use this credit right now, I could fuck up this itinerary. And when your parents get to that gate, it could be a whole Mm -hmm. nightmare. So I don't want to touch the itinerary. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you the $99 per ticket in credit, I'm just going to email it to you after they finish this leg of the trip. And okay. I said, okay, sounds great. Just as long as they can get on. Whatever flight. we need to do to <laughs> get them need. on the flight. Yes. We wake up this morning and Joe's, and now my parents, my, my in-laws have been here for a couple of days. Uh, we wake up this morning and the airline has credited us, us back every dime that we spent on the original ticket. So oh. like every, I don't think this was something they did because they liked me because I was quite the fucking cocksucker on the phone. <laughs> and I don't usually get riled up with customer service agents because I was one and I know how it goes, right? Yeah. But I am now in a real moral dilemma here about what I do. I mean, this is, and we're not talking about a small amount of money. We're talking about a chunk of change that everyone could use during the pandemic. Yeah. But now I'm like, hmm, what do I do in this situation? It caused me a lot of headache, but it wasn't their fault. It was my fault. I made the tickets for San Jose, Coast, California, not San Jose, Costa Rica. So I'm in a moral dilemma. Do I return this 
chunk of money, right? We're also not talking about tens of thousands of dollars, right? It's certainly not going to hurt the airline if I keep the credit, but I'm wondering it's like what a hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, maybe, maybe a thousand, right? Maybe we're talking mm-hmm. about a thousand bucks. Right. So now I've got this moral dilemma about what I do with the credit that was given to me, I think erroneously for this flight. What do you think I should do? Oh, what would you wow. do? Mm, that's tough because you know you you really kind of want to just roll with it, but you know, yeah, I, I might call and say, "Hey, this happened. Do you, what do you think, ticket agent person? What if I call and I leave them a message? <laughs> okay. <laughs> call and leave them a message saying you'll call them either in, in thirty, 30 minutes, minutes to six, to six hours. hours. That's correct. <laughs> yes." What if I just call and I go through that little, you know, you, you know, if you'd like a callback, press one. If you'd like to leave a message yeah. for an agent, press two. What if I just leave a message saying the you following shoot thing? An email. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my name is Brian and you gave me a credit back uh, that I wasn't supposed to get. So give me a call back. Uh, you've got my phone number. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think I've made my effort. Right. I mean, no mm-hmm. one could fault yes, me. I, exactly. In good faith, I called back and I explained the situation to them because yeah. I did it. Let me repeat what I said. Hey, it's Brian. Uh, I think you gave me a credit back that I wasn't supposed to get. So call me back. You know my number. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I explained the situation, but without wasting their time, I was trying to get to the point as quickly as possible. They have my phone number. Everyone's got caller ID. Right. They've got my name, Brian. Yeah, they've got it in the system. I mean, how many Brian's can there be? In the in this in the major airline system. <laughs> okay. All right. Now I understand. I should probably Hey it's, I... it's Brian spelled with a Y. <laughs> you gave me a credit right. back by mistake. You got my phone number, call me back. Bye. <laughs> I might shoot him an email. Go go that oh. route first. Because here's the thing too, I'm thinking, is that if you take the credit and run and then later on you think you have a credit. And then you try to use the credit and something happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. that back end thing. So, yeah. Yeah, so either, I mean, listen, (laughs) I guess it is possible that someone just said these poor guys, they had to go through this and they they spent a long time on the phone with us and all this other stuff. You were on the phone with the supervisor. I was on the phone with the supervisor. But, I mean, she at the end of the call, she explained how much I was going to get back and she explained Mm -hmm. the reasoning why. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm having a little bit of a moral dilemma, as I always do in these type of situations. It's like when the gro- when the cashier gives you an extra twenty back, right? It's like oh, but I usually err on the side of of good judgment and just yes. say, okay, here's the twenty bucks back because you know what? I don't want to be yeah. a fucking you know nudnik right. that took twenty dollars and then at the end of her shift she's going to get in trouble or someone's going to come down on her or whatever it is. Sure. I don't think anybody's going to miss the the nine hundred twenty two dollars in airline credit, but. You never know. Could they could it could be a big deal to them. And maybe the supervisor gets in trouble. So I am gonna make my best effort. I am going to email them. I Joe at Joe's Airlines dot com. <laughs> I hope I'm spelling that right. <laughs> what at computer dot com. Right. What was it? Shithead at computer. Shithead at <laughs> shithead war as a computer. <laughs> we still get one of those every once in a while. It's just such a like I don't know. It's such. Uh, I like it that somebody cares enough to do it. To I figure that it. I figure <laughs> <laughs> the best part of waking up is going back to bed. <laughs> that is when you have the best dream. That is for sure. When you go, when you wake up and then you go back to sleep. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. 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 Jeff or when you talked j- about that recently, when you're just about to fall asleep, when your eyes are like a flutter yes. and you have that. It's almost like you're not even asleep for a second, but you had a full dream. Right. And I feel like sometimes I have really good ideas in that in that one second, but yeah. I can never catch it. It was like I felt good about. Let me give you an example. I was sleep, I was with my son, so I you know I'm putting my son to bed right now because my wife's got all, another handful in the other room. Yes. So I go into his room, and then you know we sing a song or we put on the music, and then we read a book, and then we go to bed. And nine times out of ten, I end up falling asleep there for like fifteen, twenty minutes because I'm kind of tired from the day, and it's like you know everyone's calmed down and whatever. Sure. Right as I'm falling asleep, right as I'm falling asleep, I have like some huge breakthrough about the podcast and how we Uh can make it better, or you know my business, and I just need to put these two people together. Right, I have it. But it's it's concrete while it's happening, but then it's nebulous as soon as I open. It's almost like I wake up to remember it, but then I can't remember it. It just goes away. It's like, ah, the, connections is, the connection is lost. Yeah. And I hate that. I wish there was a way to record <laughs> our dreams because I think that would be really fucking cool. 
that would be. I mean, I would love that. I had a dream about Penelope Cruz a couple nights ago. I wish okay. I could have recorded that dream. Yes. And I had a I, then I had a third dream about Ryan Seacrest and Brian Dunkelman. All three of us. <laughs> Well, right. It's in a compromising kind of situation. You've been, you've been <laughs> in a compromising situation. It's yes. only things that you've been thinking about, right? So it's characters and people you've been thinking about. I know yeah. Jeff woke up the other morning and had, I guess, had woken up and then gone back to sleep and then woke back up and he was like, oh, my God, I just had the craziest dream. I'm pr- I was producing a play for Neil Young. And like, really? there's a whole cast of characters and things. And so it's kind of a running joke with Jeff and I. If we do that, we're like, what movie did you go to? Oh, like, it's kind yeah. of like a movie. It's it so is a movie. Yeah. That's it, yeah. I love dreams. I used to do a dream journal, right? Like mm-hmm. I used to do a dream journal and, and that way went, and I was training myself to remember the dreams because I thought there should, there's gotta be some good nuggets in there. Right. But there then are. I found out that my dreams are just a bunch of fucking real nonsense. Like I'm just like, <laughs> like what's your brain? Yeah. Like, the, processing well, but who knows? Stuff. Maybe what, maybe the, maybe we're, re, we're awake when we're dreaming and we're, we're sleeping while we're awake. I mean, Whoa. who fucking, I know that should blow your mind. And I, I got mean, that shit when I was high on LSD one time. I yeah. saw it. I saw it. <laughs> You're opening up chakras right there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> open up your vachakra. <laughs> vachakra. Open up your vachakra, Hodley, and let me in. Yeah, open up your vachakra, Hodley. Okay, Henry. <laughs> Sorry, man. I just, you know, just guys got a heart wants what the heart wants. I know you're really attracted to Hoadley, huh? Oh man, I got to, I, I had a dream about Hoadley the other night too. <laughs> I don't even want to know what it was about. It involved a couple of farm animals. Oh, and an one? oil pan. An oil pan. Yeah, the kind you put in your car. Don't ask me. It's my dreams, man. Okay, <laughs> bye, Henry. I'll talk to you later. I know what you can do with that credit. You can buy a banner, Ed. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. We at Podcast Universe are always here to help your eagle. <laughs> uh, so listen to this. This is a perfect segue into what I want to talk about. So I, I experimented with a lot. I say a lot. I experimented with hallucinogens for some part of my life, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mushrooms. LSD mainly, and then uh, DMT at some point, which is the, oh. uh, yeah, which is no joke. That's not, that's not, it's nothing to be trifled with, right? Mm-hmm. The DMT is, is I insane. haven't tried that one. And I won't yeah. explain how I, how I got it, because uh, I just don't think it's irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. Explain yeah, how I, I got it. I don't think I would either. I don't even know why I had to qualify it. Like, I'm just not <laughs> yeah. going to explain it. Yeah. Why do I have to say this that I'm not exactly going to explain it? exactly who I got it from. Yeah, I know. And you can call this number. I can almost hear the audience going, what kind of DMT did you get? Where did you get it, man? <laughs> Give me a call. <laughs> okay, Henry. Uh, so... um. When obviously, when you take hallucinogens, for those of you who have not out there, when you take hallucinogens, you see, hear, and do things that you have never heard, seen, or done before. It it attaches. Some people say, some scientists believe that it starts to connect the neurons and the electrical impulses in your brain, the same ones that are there when you're sleeping and when you're dreaming. It connects them while you're awake because those neural po- passages close when you're awake allowing you to function and allowing time and space, you know, the conceptual time and space and all this to be processed in your mind because that's how you function as a human being. Right. If you didn't if you didn't have the concept of time and space in your head, you would be fucked living in the world we live in because we mm-hmm. live in a past, present, future world, right? But when you mm-hmm. take some hallucinogens, some types of hallucinogens, mainly LSD and DMT, though mushrooms does have a similar effect sometimes, it breaks down those walls. So now the whole world is kind of coming at you in a weirder way. You don't have a, depending on how high you are, (laughs) you don't have a concept of space or time, or it can start to bleed together. And so you get some really funky experiences. Some people call them spiritual experiences. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would, I would consider them spiritual experiences, right? I don't know why that just popped on my screen. Um, I would call them, uh, I would call it a spiritual experience, no doubt, in some cases. In other cases, I just ended up running around my front yard in my underwear and things didn't end up so great for me. (laughs) Or chasing down robbers next door. Right. (laughs) 
How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. One time I ended up, I swear to God, Hobie, one time I ended up mowing my lawn in my underwear high on LSD oh. when I was like 16 years old and my dad was out of town. And it was like seven, like six forty five, <laughs> seven in the morning, you know, when no one wants to hear your fucking lawn more and it's a quiet neighborhood. It's not like we lived on a busy street. We lived in a cul-de-sac a mile away from any street. Right. And so I was out there, you know, and I, I had put my speaker outside the window of the house and I was blaring the music and I was <laughs> mowing the lawn and I was like apologizing to the grass for killing it. I was like, I'm sorry, dude. And that's it's, something I was going to ask you. Like, how did you think about that when you were on the LSD? Because I would think you wouldn't want to kill the grass, like like hurt the grass. I didn't want to hurt the grass. I was like, it wasn't about hurting the grass. It's that I knew that the grass had to be broken in order to regrow. That's how it all works. You have to be split in half and then you regrow better than ever. You know, it's like the whole, yeah. the whole thing. Meanwhile, I've got, you know, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony blaring out the window. <laughs> If it wasn't for my neighbor who kindly walked over and was like, hey, Brian. And I was like, hey, Mr. Hey. You know, Snoopy Snoops, what's going on? And he's like, I think you should probably go inside. And I was like, what? And he's like, I think you should let's go inside now. Let's go inside. Bless and I was like, I know. he was like, bless your heart. <laughs> he's like, let me finish up the grass for you. Thanks, Mr. Snoopy Snoop. No problem. Uh, you're in your, you know, you're in your underoos. With your small little uh, man boner running around, <laughs> running around the front yard, talking to the grass. Not a good look. <laughs> right. Let me help you out here, Brian. So when I when when you're in those states, you come up with some some pretty crazy nutty stuff. So I I and I bring this all around to say that I read an article. A guy wrote a a, a, a theorist, <laughs> like one of these guys, right? It just thinks about things for the sake of thinking about them. He's a lot smarter than any of us will ever be. And he mm-hmm. thinks about shit. He likes to break it, deconstruct it, and think about the norms and tear them down, man. Right? And yeah. he wrote a piece that blew my fucking mind. And I asked this question when I was 15 years old. High on LSD. High on yellow sunshine. Molly. Blotter paper, if you know what I mean, Hoadley. <laughs> <laughs> yellow school bus or whatever it was called. Jesus yeah. Christ. Whatever the... They used to give the, na- the the acid names so that, you know, you'd get higher, I guess. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I got that Jesus Christ, man, if you want it. That was, and I was like, the Jesus Christ is here. The Jesus Christ is in town, guys. We got to buy it. Oh, we got to get it. Got to get it. I thought about, what if two plus two never really equaled four? And they're just mm-hmm. telling us that's what it equals, right? And so this guy wrote a paper, Hoadley, and that's exactly what the paper said. It said, how do we know? One plus one equals two. It's just something that was made up. What if science and math was wrong? And I was like, holy shit. Like this, it, 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 I had a flashback instantaneously. I was like in my basement, 15 years old, listening to, you know, the doors and like, what if they're just lying to us? What if it's, how, how do we know one plus one is two, Hoadley? How do you know? How do you know for real? 
Well, it's agreed upon, and there's also mathematics and science are real like things in the universe. So, why you, you know, got to be ours. why you got to be harsh in my vibe, man? <laughs> but it could be relative, you know. I mean, it could be relative. Mm-hmm. One and one is two because someone made it up, right? Someone said one and one is two. What mm-hmm. if one and one is really three? Could be. You don't agree with me, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you were going to roll with me on this one, but I liked I like the, the the you know the thought process going on with it. That's fun. I think that <laughs> that you know. I think math is the universal language. <laughs> I thought love was the universal language. <laughs> that is too. Maybe that's why we have math. maybe that's why we have a difference of opinion on this particular topic. <laughs> it's because I believe that love is the universal language. <laughs> I, I do too. <laughs> 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 And yes. you think science is the unit, math and science are the universal <laughs> language. I think we can all agree. I'm right on this. Uh, you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> I'll roll with you on it. I feel like every time I say that, like that, Gustavo, we should have like a little picture of Gustavo popping up on the side of the screen. <laughs> Gustavo, hola. A Gustavo meme. A Gustavo meme. We need a yes, Gustavo meme. Need- we do. I'm going to put a link to this article because I thought it was really fascinating. And I actually do. He's a, he's a relative theorist, theorist. Yeah. yeah. And you should read it. And, and why I bring it all back around to hallucinogens is because this, uh, this group of people who are doing these kind of crazy outrageous, you know, type of thinking and a lot of quantum physicists and people who are working on robots and, uh, applied mathematics and all sort of stuff in California, especially are starting to get into a trend called micro dosing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Microdosing is basically when you take a smaller amount of a hallucinogen like LSD because it does break down those walls and allows you to think in a different way, to solve problems, to come up with new solutions, to think about things in not relatively, but unrelatively, right? Like in a completely different angle. And I completely am behind this. Like, I think this is an incredible use I am of too. drugs yeah. and, and, and intelligence. In time. Yeah. I wish we could find a reason to take all, you know, a lot of different stuff. Like, I mean, I wish like, you know, yeah. We, and we used to give our pilots speed. We used to, you know, now we're curing uh, depression with ecstasy. And now we've got our scientists yeah. are all taking, L, not all of them, but some of them are taking LSD to think about things and get them outside of the box. In this concept, mm-hmm. I understand personally, because as one of the great thinkers of our time, I also I, I mean, we can all agree on that. That's I, we can. Okay, That's we can agree universal. on love and That's science. That's a universal. But what fact. we can agree is that Brian Greene is one of the greatest thinkers of his generation. Yes. I didn't say which generation, but I said <laughs> a generation. <laughs> I am the That's greatest thinker of the year 2025 BC. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> but I. I like this out of the box thinking that people are doing and and bringing this narrative that is so familiar to me because when I was just experimenting with it as a, as a young man, I saw how, how much that could open up your mind. And I always used to think to myself like, wow, these straight laced motherfuckers just don't know. They're not getting it. They're not part of it. They don't get, you know, they don't get how it can change your mind and (laughs) things are different. I love everybody. And, you know, I forgot to go to work today, but that's okay. Because, you know, (laughs) it doesn't really matter. All the trees are breathing with me. (laughs) (laughs) Oliver Stone. I'm reading his autobiography right now. Oh my God. That guy's probably got some fucking stories. um, Dosed his dad. With the LSD without his dad knowing. He dosed his dad without his dad knowing? <laughs> he dosed his dad without his dad knowing. And his dad figured it out, like, kind of partial through the trip and was like, I'm just going to muscle through this and drink a bunch of whiskey. <laughs> and and, he and that's what he did? Mad. Yes. <laughs> In the whole scheme of things. I, I was while well, I was reading this part of the book. I thought, "Wow, <laughs> wow, that is intense." I guess Oliver Stone just wanted to really like exactly what you're saying. You know, show him, show him, open up your mind. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, now, but let me ask you this: Now, like was this? 60s. Oh, this was back in the '60s. Mm-hmm. So he did this to his dad when he was like a young yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Like, fucked up, man. If I would have dosed my dad, are you fucking kidding me, man? No, I know, Shit right? would have gone haywire. Shit gone down. Haywire. <laughs> I, know, I would I have been so would, scared. I would have been sent away to oh, man. a home of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I didn't ever dose my dad, and I was almost sent away to a home. I was sent away to a home. It wasn't my own. My dad said, go to another home. Go to another home. Whichever home you choose, go to it. <laughs> he caught on that I was dosing myself and to say, you're going to a home. It's just not yeah. mine. I'll give you a ride wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was in the kitchen the other night, and, I've, and listen, I tell this story. Uh, I love my father. We have a great relationship now. Everything's great. So, um, but I, I tell this story that, um, I, or I've been telling this story for years in kind of a joking way that, you know, my dad kicked me out of the house a couple different times, right? But he kicked me out of the house once. He took me to a Wendy's. He bought me a burger. He sat me down and he's like, I'm sorry, you can't come back to the house. And I'm like, what? <laughs> he's like, I'm sorry. Wendy's? Yeah. Can he have gone to like how? Yeah. <laughs> Hell's Steakhouse. I was probably tripping like on acid. Last, like a last meal. I was probably dosed myself. Even though I was like my Cheshire cat eyes, like, woo. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do not Here's compute. Here's a burger. Dad. Hey, Dad. Here's a burger. Don't yeah. come back. <laughs> Open up your French fry chakra, Dad, and chill out, man. <laughs> Can I have a baked potato with ba- no bacon? <laughs> no bacon. I don't want to slaughter no swine. Um, so he says, you know. Sorry, but you know, it's just not things aren't working out. <laughs> it's, right. it's don't worry, it's me, it's not you. But you know, you can't come back. And at the time, at me as a young man, that was devastating news. But in all defense of my father, I was a straight out of Compton fuck up. <laughs> I mean, I could not have been more of a shithead at that time uh, if I tried. And so I've been telling the story that my dad left me at a went kicked me out of the house and left me at a Wendy's, <laughs> but at least he paid for the burger. And my dad. He got so angry with me in the kitchen. That's angry, but he like snapped back. He's like, son, I did not leave you at the Wendy's. I asked you if you wanted a ride home and you said, no, you just walked out of the Wendy's. If you wanted a ride somewhere, it just wasn't, it just wasn't where you wanted to go. And I said, you were like, you said no out of principle. Right? I know. I'm like, I don't need no. anything else from you. Yeah. You bought me the burger. That's it. That's all Meanwhile. Fun. Yeah. He said that I went to the payphone in the corner called somebody and he drove yeah payphone that's how long ago this was Mm -hmm. and he drove by and he was like you sure you don't want to ride (laughs) no i'm gonna leave with the clothes on my back and my dignity (laughs) (laughs) can i have a dollar for the bus dad (laughs) and for the payphone can you call me an uber (laughs) (laughs) quarters oh my god that was those those were the days when he had to get it so um you know, to say all this, like, I'm, I'm super encouraged that we're now getting to a point where we can kind of, you know, think about these things a little bit differently. Like back in the day when I was experimenting with LSD, it was just, you were just being a royal fuck up. And I was, there was no doubt about it. I'm not encouraging 16 year olds to do LSD, yeah. but now the greatest minds of our time, including myself, are thinking about <laughs> things differently. Yes. <laughs> oh my god that's too funny i love it no I'm, I'm on board with it too i'm on board with the microdosing and the experimentation of just different ways hey i mean our brain what, what do they say there's something about we only use what 10 percent or something of our brain yeah uh, I mean, seven percent i think is what they say seven i was gonna say seven at first but okay so a small percentage is the point point. Yeah. and you know if we can help unlock our brain's full potential or part more than seven or 10 percent at least i'm all for it i'd like to think that everybody out there is unlocking some of their potential just by listening to the commercial break i think you automatically unleashing your potential unlock your potential (laughs) open up your brain chakra (laughs) gustavo Gustavo. Yes. Gustavo. Uh, I love me some Gustavo. <laughs> me too. Love me some Gustavo. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to wrap it up here. We're going to take it to the after show where we'll continue this conversation. Wee. If you want a chance to get in on the cool masks that we have, then all you got to do is you got to go to at the commercial break on Insta. Follow us. And then we'll be giving it away sometime in the upcoming week. Um, we'll run a little contest. We might ask for people to do something funny, like on video or something like that. I don't know. You know, engagement. We're trying to get some in- user yes. engagement. Lots of people listen to us, but mm-hmm. no one engages with us. So I'm either yes. ta- I'm taking that a little bit personally now, Holy. I'm taking it personally. Oh. <laughs> do you want six or seven more un- unengaged subscribers? 
No, Henry, I'm done spending money with you. You <laughs> fucked me on the banner ad. You screwed me on the computer. Now you're oogling my co-host. She's married. <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> Gustavo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tcbpodcast.com is where you can go to sign up to the break room and with the break room you'll get all of the after shows that's once a week actually we're going to do it after each episode now we're just going to do an after show rather than a newsletter because we think that no one really cares about a newsletter because we <laughs> asked ourselves the hard question do we really give a shit about a newsletter <laughs> right. another news another letter. newsletter and no we don't but if you had an extra yeah. 15 or 20 minutes of the show each week, would that be valuable? And you know, let what? us know. Let, let us, us know your thoughts. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. Write us Write info in. info at tcbpodcast dot com, or you can go to the website. You can drop us a comment. Also, we're soliciting, still soliciting, uh, parody songs, sound clips, audio bites, things that you make that you own uh, that you would like to share on air. Send them to me, and who knows, you could end up being a bit at the beginning of the show. I have one. You do. Oh, you do. That's right. <laughs> you do. We have our very first parody song, and I can't wait to play it. Yeah. I don't think we're not going to play it this time because I want to. I was going to say we could put it at the beginning of the show as one of the bits, but I'd rather talk about it as we go because it's okay. extra. It's extra. I'm just going to put it's it that extra. way. It's extra. It is extra. It's extra. <laughs> Who is that guy? <laughs> Did he just show up in your life? Oh, no. I, I, I knew it. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about it on the after show. TCBpodcast.com. <laughs> and join the break room. And next week, you get to watch all of these episodes live. Recorded live. <laughs> <laughs> recorded live on YouTube. I love when they used to say, like, this this show has been, you know, recorded in front of a live studio audience. And it's like, yeah. what? what uh, who's recording in front of a dead studio audience? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I guess they mean that it wasn't a laugh track. So, you know what I mean, Hoadley. I know what you mean, Brian. Sorry. I've I got mi- you. I've been microdosing. Okay. <laughs> Until next week, we'd like to thank you for listening to the commercial break from Chrissy Hoadley and Brian yes. Green to all of you out there. Open up your vachakra. Open up your vachakras to us. And we yes, will see we you, you next week. Love you too. Bye. Bye. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to 250000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12 1 2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSU FCU. That's MSU FCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Email us at thecommercialb at gmail.com. Find us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Commercial Break. New episodes drop every Wednesday. We can be found on Spotify, iHeartMedia, Apple, Google, and all major podcast providers. 
The Commercial Break is a great middleweight production. Written and produced by Brian Green. Co-hosted by Chrissy Hoadley. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings. How's your money feeling? It's about to feel happier with a certificate from Happy Money's partner, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. Elevate and increase your savings with 18-month terms and only a $500 minimum. And the happiest part? MSU FCU certificates yield 4.5% APY annual percentage yield. Now that's a happier side of money. Elevate your savings. Go to happymoney.com slash MSUFCU. That's MSUFCU. Funds insured up to $250,000 by NCUA. The APY is accurate as of the 12-1-2023 dividend declaration date. Early withdrawal penalties do apply. Fees may reduce earnings on the account. Any monthly withdrawals or transfers reduce earnings.